This is the second in my videos of conduction, convection and radiation. If you want to learn about conduction, check out video one, but here we're focusing on convection. So what it is, the role of convection in everyday phenomena, and how to investigate it practically. So, in terms of everyday phenomena, the fact that it's windy at the beach, the fact that you find radiators at the bottom of a wall, earthquakes, and the fact that you find the heating element, uh, the cooling element at the top of a fridge or a freezer, the missing link between all of those things is convection. So, con um, convection is something that brings together a number of um, other um, pieces of physics. So just to check you know all the background, pause the video and write down the answers to these questions. So, temperature is a measure of average kinetic or movement energy, so it's also linked to particle speed. Density is mass per unit of volume. The equation is rho equals m over v, but what that means in practice is if you take a certain volume, the more particles there are in that volume, the higher the density. Okay, so this would be a high density substance, this would be a low density substance. The other thing to bear in mind here are the states of matter that flow are liquids and gases because they do not have strong intermolecular bonds. So in both of those you've got moving particles. So in liquids the particles slide past each other and in gases they just move around freely. So this is a bit of a thought experiment I, I, I do in class, or not a thought experiment but a simple experiment. What we've got here is a conical flask and just a tube, a bung in the top and then a tube that is kind of C-shaped and a beaker of water. If you put it so that the end of this tube is underneath the water and then cup this with your hands, what you actually see is that bubbles start to come out of that tube. The reason for that is because of the warmth of your hands warming the air that is in here. That causes something called thermal expansion, which sounds complicated, but really it's quite simple. It just means that as, because you warm the air up, it takes up more space. So some of the air gets pushed along this tube and fo is forced out in terms of bubbles. So why does that happen? Why is it that when you warm up a gas, it takes up more room? Now this links to something called Charles's Law, which you will do when you study ideal gases. But essentially, if you increase the temperature of the particles, we've said that temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. So what you do is you increase the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is linked to particle speed, so you increase the speed, what that will do is it will mean that the particle separation increases. If they're moving quickly, imagine if you're standing st if you're standing still next to somebody, you can stand really close to them shoulder to shoulder, but if you start running around you naturally space out. So that will increase the particle separation. I just rub out where I've made an error there. And that will increase the volume. The other really key link that we're going to need is the link between increased volume and density. So if I take some particles, I'm just going to draw four particles here, taking up this much room in that box. If they increase in volume, like that, what's happened to the density? Well, 
what's happening to the density if I take the same area as I, I've got in both pictures it shows that if you increase the volume what happens is you decrease the density so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how this links into what convection is and then we'll look at some real life examples so the definition of convection is this when particles in a fluid so in a gas or a liquid are heated they vibrate more quickly this increases the particle separation so the density decreases particles with a low density rise upwards and particles with a higher sorry cooler particles with a higher density take their place and that's what we call a convection current so i'm going to show you a couple of things in terms of real life applications of that the first is how we would investigate it in whether this happens in a lab so this is a kind of a glass uh, tube it's a specially shaped glass tube so that it's in a rectangular shape but with an opening at the top so what we do is we fill this with water okay so it gets filled with water and then we drop a tiny little bit of purple dye into um, the top of that water so if we didn't heat it what we would expect is for that dye just by diffusion to spread equally in both directions but to investigate convection what we do is we place a heat source such as a candle or a Bunsen burner under one of the two verticals what that will do is it will take the particles in that bit of water and heat them so they get more energy when they get more energy what we've said is they will spread out so they become less dense and if they become less dense so we take the particles heat them so they get more kinetic energy and spread out that means they're going to get less dense and that is going to mean that they rise upwards if they rise upwards there's going to be a gap down here so what's going to happen is the cool particles with a high density are going to take their place so that will keep moving around in circles now and what that will do is it will mean that we don't get this um, symmetrical spread of the dye what actually happens is the dye will not move this way because of the conduction convection current so all of the dye will move in this direction so we can see that the water is circulating around the tube another common example of convection is a radiator radiators are found at the bottom of a room but they manage at the bottom of a wall but they manage to heat the whole room because of convection currents so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, um, a set of particles here which are cold if they get heated by the radiator so they're not vibrating very much if they are cold if they get heated by the radiator they are going to vibrate more quickly so they will take up more space the particles themselves don't get bigger but because they're vibrating more rapidly they take up more space okay so the particles vibrate faster and therefore they move further apart if they're taking up more space what we've said is the density decreases so I've got a particle missing there I had five in my original so they rise upwards and that's going to create a gap down here so what will happen is other um, cool air will move next to the radiator and then that will get heated and the same thing will happen over here somewhere 
the particles are not near the radiator anymore, so they will cool back down. Ooh, I did not mean to do that. They will cool back down and fall back down to the bottom. Okay, so that's why radiators are at the bottom of the wall. In devices where you want to cool, you need to do the opposite. Okay, this is quite a common exam question because most people learn in class only about heating effects. So here, what we want to do is to create a cold freezer. So what happens is the warm air would rise to the top of the freezer naturally. So the warm air that is found, I'm going to draw my particles moving quite a lot. Um, once they get cooled by the cooling element, they are going to vibrate less rapidly and take up less space. If they take up less space, they are going to, so they get cooled, I'm just going to write down the key terms, and this means they um, move more slowly, so the particle separation decreases. This means the density is high, so the cool particles fall right down to the bottom of the fridge. Now there's nothing at the bottom of the fridge to keep them cool, so what will inevitably happen is the particles will warm up again, and when they warm up again, they rise back to the top and that process will continue. So just as, so when these cool ones float down to the bottom, more warm ones will rise to take their place. So in, I mentioned we need to be able to kind of reference everyday phenomena. The most common ones they would ask you about in exam are radiators and fridges, but just in terms of um, general knowledge, um, this is also the reason why it's windy at the beach and it's also a cause of earthquakes. So in terms of coastal breezes, during the daytime you often get sea breezes. This is because when the sun is shining, well that's a terrible picture of a sunshine, the land heats up a lot more than the sea. So that means that the air immediately above the land will rise upwards because it's been warmed up much more than the air above the sea. So the air above the sea will then take the place of the air that was above the land and you get a convection current due to that. At night time you get the reverse effect. The land cools very quickly compared to the um, water over the sea so the particles will fall downwards there and then um, move over the sea. This is also why you get plate tectonics so I'm sure you've done about this in geography so inside the earth we know that it's very hot and that causes convection currents in the um, mantle and that can move the plates on the earth's surface which sometimes causes earthquakes and other times causes volcanoes. So convection very much is the link between fridges, radiators, earthquakes and being windy at the beach. So how does it come up in exams? This is a four mark question so pause the video for up to four minutes and then I'll talk you through the answer. So a heater uses energy from a laptop computer to keep a mug of coffee hot it is connect the diagram shows it's connect how it's connected to the computer and it told us that energy is transferred at the bottom of the mug and it wants us to explain how a convection current is set up so the marks were for number one saying the particle spread out or the particle separation increases number two this causes the coffee to become less dense number three mark number three the heated coffee rises and number four, the cooler coffee falls to the to the bottom. 
So the really important thing with these questions is that you don't just tell me a generic definition for convection, you must link it to the example. So all you needed to keep referencing here was the, the thing that has got particles that are moving is the coffee. Let's have a look at another question. Now this one you can only do if you know what conduction and convection are. This is a common exam question which is about a test tube which has got ice at the bottom. Now naturally ice floats so it's got a metal gauze to hold it down here. If you put this over a Bunsen burner what happens is that bubbles um, are created at the top where the water is boiling. So the question asks you how, uh, which is the bigger effect here, conduction or convection? So this is an exam question on that. I've just um, explained the scenario. Um, so it's saying, explain why the ice remains frozen when the top of the tube is heated. Again, pause for two minutes and then I'll go through the answer. So this is an example of a question where there are four possible things you can get the marks for and you can have a maximum of any two. So if you say the energy is not transferred to the ice, that would get you one mark. This is because conduction, there is not very much conduction, okay? So there is not much conduction in the water or in the glass. The water at the top stays hot because it is less dense. So the dominant effect here is the convection, not the conduction. So what I've done there is I've gone through what is convection. We've looked at several everyday phenomena and we've also looked at how you would investigate that in a lab practical and how it comes up in exams.